Now let's talk about electricity in the U.S. Fifty percent of the electricity comes from coal. Twenty percent comes from natural gas. Seventy percent hydrocarbons. Ten percent comes from nuclear. 10% comes from hydroelectric. This is the favorite because it's falling water, um, dams, and it's renewable. So this is a very f a favorite. One of the problems with it is that all the dams are built in the U.S., so it, it can't go up. It's, a, it's fixed. There's 2% oil. Now, oil is so valuable uh, because it produces liquid hydrocarbons that is generally not used in electricity but as standby power for example when um, three o'clock in the in a hot afternoon rolls around and people's air conditioners fire up oil in diesel generators is used to carry the extra capacity so this is this is used uh, only in peak loading um, with diesel generators now the thing that people are hoping for is this other category. These, these are the renewables. In there you have wind, geothermal, and solar. So uh, a lot of the predictions, energy predictions into the future show the other rising to 20%. So um, uh, with the investment that our people are making in solar, as, as high as 20% of the energy in the U.S. could be re, uh, renewable, combined with the hydroelectric, it's 30 percent. Now, um, because of global warming, people are building natural gas power plants because it turns out um, if you take a heat to CO2 ratio, natural gas puts out more heat, and that's what we need for power, more heat per CO2 than coal. And so therefore, 90 percent Ninety percent of the new power plants being built in the U.S. are natural gas. You don't want to be building coal power plants right now because if you get sued by the environmentalists, they'll always point to the fact that natural gas is more power to CO2 efficient. So this is what is happening. Now, I, I rate hydrocarbons one, one in many, way ahead of everyone, natural gas and coal. So this is, this is just my personal rating, because with natural gas, you actually can compress it in the form of butane and propane, and you can use it in transportation. Coal uh, is the least movable or malleable, which is really leaves it only good for electricity. So I wouldn't be so quick to burn this, especially since peak natural gas is predicted at 15 years behind oil. So... Unfortunately, I'm not in charge, and um, global warming is an issue, so, so we are burning our natural gas first in, in the new power plants. Now, people are hoping for nuclear energy to come along, um, and nuclear energy to come along and solve this uh, global warming uh, problem. But unfortunately, there's only about 400 reactors in the world. And um, we currently burn 10 terawatts, which is 10,000 billion. The numbers are so huge that you would need to build 10,000 nuclear reactors to produce these 10 terawatts. Now, I'm, I'm lifting this data from David Goldstein of Caltech. but 
let me just write what 10 terawatts are. You have 10,000 gigawatts. Now this is what a big power plant is, a big coal or nuclear power plant is. And so you need 10,000 big coal or nuclear or natural gas or coal or nuclear power plants. One gigawatt, 10,000. Now, when we come back to solar, the point I want to make is that if you want to play in the majors, in the, in the, the major leagues, you need to produce 2,000 gigawatts. If, if solar energy is to, is to carry 20% of the electrical load in the world, because what well, we can talk about the US, but 2,000 gigawatts is, is the load that, that solar has to carry. Now, I don't know, you can listen to me on these tapes and you're gonna eventually find out that I'm a skeptic of green. And all my advisors say, don't, don't come down on green because it's not popular. I just look at these numbers and say, I know there's a lot of houses out there, but this is a lot of numbers. This is very big. So I'm not rooting against green. I'm just trying to just kind of calibrate it. So the, the thing about solar is that whatever solar doesn't do, so if solar comes in and is small, let's say it's only 15%, you know, just just say it doesn't do as well as 20, coal will carry the distance. Coal will go the distance. We have, the, the estimate is that we have 200 years of coal. Now, the, the reality is if that, if all the load goes to coal, that number will drop from 200 to 100 and lower. So at current consumption, coal has 200 years. And these power plants are not as difficult to build. You, Pretty much all you need is the near people and near cold water. That's in a train track. That's, that's how difficult it is to build a coal power plant. Now, nuclear power is interesting in that since Three Mile Island back in the 70s, no nuclear power plants have, built, have been built in the U.S. So if you read the DOE's energy or budget, you will see that $1 billion has been allocated to lawsuits to help a nuclear reactor company to build a nuclear reactor in the U.S. because the, the DOE recognizes that we really could use some nuclear energy. But they've allocated a billion dollars, I think their budget is 30 billion, one billion dollars of their money just to fight lawsuits that are inevitable from environmentalists when a nuclear power plant uh, is attempted to build. I, I think this is just a, a, so amazing that we're funding lawsuits with our Department of Energy. But that's the way, that's the way America works. Um, so the final thing is if we try to put the electrical grid, let's say we really are talking about hydrogen cars, and we go over here and we, we put electricity and we try to drive that through the grid and there's really no clear discussion on how we're going to build or create hydrogen but it either can be done through natural gas which my son goes that's ridiculous or electricity the you have to put the 85 million barrels of oil into the electricity to push that much power through the electrical grid which loses half on the way so just the idea of having as many as much movement in the form of hydrogen, it, the numbers just don't add up. There's no there's no possible way that we can move as many cars we're doing now. Not even one thousandth as many. So I'm not really an optimist of hydrogen. So just wrapping up, the U.S. electricity is pretty much coal and natural gas, you know, for the next hundred years. The good news is it won't run out like oil will. It's got extra life, so we will have oil, or we'll have electricity when the cars stop.